Hey there, internet friends. Trevor Starkey here with another episode of That D Plus Show. Class is in session for the only show from that nerdy site that lets you know what kind of quality to expect right from the name. I'm your host, and each week we dive into a different Disney Plus offering and discuss its history, how it holds up today, and our general impressions. If you like the show, we would love it if you like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. Joining me today, we have nobody. It is a solo show this week. Uh, we couldn't, we had a hard time kind of figuring out what to try and like sit down and discuss this week. Um, and uh, and I ultimately landed here on Daredevil Into the Ring, uh, which is the first episode of the uh, Netflix Daredevil series. Uh, and I chose this in honor of the possibility of uh, Daredevil showing up in She-Hulk, which has been teased uh, since kind of uh, like D23 and, and trailers and stuff like that. Um, uh, and just uh, didn't really get anybody to join me, able to join me this week. So I figured that's all right. I think I can still watch the watch the episode and do a quick little uh, uh, solo show on it. Um, before I hop into that, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we will have other people joining me starting next week because we are diving into yet another Halloween themed month, uh, obviously with October right here around the corner. Uh, so our lineup for October is looking like, uh, as follows. Um, we're kind of the first couple of weeks we're benefiting from the fact that like Disney plus going to have some pretty notable releases, um, Coming out the day that this episode goes live is Hocus Pocus 2, the long-awaited sequel to uh, the 90s classic Hocus Pocus film, which we did, I believe, maybe last year, last year or two years ago uh, in our holiday Halloween um, month. Uh, Hocus Pocus 2 coming out September 30th. So we will discuss it on the October 7th episode of That D Plus Show. October 7th is when the Marvel Cinematic Universe Werewolf by Night special comes out. So we will discuss that on the October 14th episode of That D Plus Show. Uh, following that, October 21st, we will be diving into Halloween Town High, uh, continuing the annual tradition we've had of looking at a Halloween Town uh, Disney Channel original movie series. Uh, and as I understand it, um, uh, this one is still where they're not crappy, I guess. Eh, we'll see. Uh, I really did not like uh, the, the Calabar's Revenge last year when we talked about it. Um, uh, and, but Cameron and Logan really defend that like, oh, this one's still fine. So we'll see. Uh, and then continuing, uh, the tradition we started last year, uh, we will wrap up our October month of that D plus show episodes with a trio of Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes. Uh, we did episodes one, two, and three last year, so we will continue on with episodes four, five, and six uh, in the Treehouse of Horror saga uh, this year on October 28th. So stay tuned for all that fun stuff in the month of October. Uh, we also started discussing, uh, even beyond that, some of the uh, November offerings as well. Um, We'll have, you know, She-Hulk series wrap up. We'll have Andor is going to be coming to a close, I think, during that time frame. So uh, lots of lots of good that D plus show to wrap up 2022 here. But uh, all starts with our spooky Halloween themed month there uh, in October. So stay tuned for all of that. Uh, as I said, this week's episode is uh, going to be a, uh, a short little one with me just talking about Daredevil Into the Ring. Uh, that is season one, episode one of the Netflix Daredevil series, which is now, of course, available on Disney+. Plus. Uh, why did we pick it? As I said, in honor of maybe Daredevil was going to be a cameo in this week's She-Hulk. Uh, spoilers, he has not yet appeared. Um, but, uh, you know, he'll, he'll theoretically still be making his way out there sometime. So maybe we'll get ahead of, ahead of the SEO curve on this one. Uh, a little bit of the history lesson here. 
uh, Daredevil was originally released on April 10th, 2015. Uh, it was the first season of the Netflix Daredevil series. Other releases we had at this time, we had the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt series came out March of 2015, uh, a couple months earlier. We had I Zombie uh, debuted on the CW on March 17th. We had The Late Late Show with James Corden began its run there March 23rd. Uh, Lip Sync Battle began its run as a standalone series apart from uh, being kind of a segment on the Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show. Um, That started on April 2nd. Daredevil here April 10th. Uh, on May 8th, we had the debut of Grace and Frankie on also on Netflix, I believe. Uh, there wasn't a ton, because obviously in the traditional TV model, April is not typically a time that shows debut. Uh, it's typically you're going to have like, you know, the fall season. But uh, we did have Ballers debut on HBO on June 21st. And the first episodes of Mr. Robot debuted on June 24th, 2015. Uh, This episode has a runtime of 55 minutes. And in the MCU TV timeline of things, uh, we had had prior to this, the first couple seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. um, ran between September 2013 and May 2015. Uh, We had the first season of Agent Carter had run January through February of 2015, so earlier the year that this came out. Then we had Daredevil came out April 2015. Jessica Jones came out November 2015. And in both those cases, it was the Netflix binge model of the entire season dropped on, you know, a given day. Uh, Daredevil season two would come out March 2016. Uh, followed by Luke Cage and Iron Fist in September 2016 and March 2017, respectively. All of that leading up to the team-up among the Netflix heroes. Uh, The Defenders uh, came out August 2017. And then uh, we had, you know, another season of Daredevil in there somewhere. I think there was another season of Jessica Jones. Yeah, in there somewhere. Um, Eventually, The Punisher came out, but the last one I have here is The Inhumans, uh, which we've also done a That D Plus show on, came out September 2017 through November 2017. So that was our, you know, it's only been five years, but that was the the kind of Netflix slash uh, ABC, ABC timeline of things, I believe. Yeah, Um, uh, the TV timeline of things. Uh, Our roll call here, our director of this episode, Phil Abraham, uh, who has done a lot of TV directing, going all the way back to an episode of The Sopranos in 2007. Other shows include Breaking Bad, The Walking Dead, 15 episodes of Mad Men, uh, 11 episodes of Orange is the New Black, and three episodes of Glow. For Breaking Bad and Walking Dead, it was one episode apiece. He had a lot of, like one and done kind of uh, uh, appearances uh, on a lot of his other uh, directing gigs. The writer was Drew Goddard, who started out as a staff writer on Buffy uh, and was uh, kind of eventually worked his way up to an executive story editor on Angel uh, back in the the Joss Whedon era of things. Uh, he would go on to write a handful of episodes of Lost you would also write The Cabin in the Woods, World War Z, and The Martian uh, as the uh, adapter for the screenplays on those latter two. Uh, recently, he wrote Bad Times at the El Royale back in 2018, I think it was. Uh, and on IMDb, he is currently slated for the Sinister Six film, but I believe that was the version of the Sinister Six film that was like originally announced back during the amazing Spider-Man era of things back around the time of Daredevil here. Um, So it's unclear if he is still attached to whatever Sony is plotting for the Sinister Six movie now that is seemingly going to include Vulture and Morbius and probably Venom (laughs) um, and whatever other characters they have in the Sony Spider-Verse. Uh, starring, we have, of course, Charlie Cox here as Matt Murdock, who I will always uh, remember and have loved from the film Stardust, uh, the Neil Gaiman classic. 
Uh, I think he's wonderful in that. Uh, he was also in The Theory of Everything prior to this, and he's been playing Daredevil since 2015, uh, up to and including Spider-Man No Way Home and presumably, unless marketing has been really lying and teasing, She-Hulk. Uh, he has also been announced to be returning to the role in Daredevil Born Again on Disney Plus in uh, slated for 2024. Deborah Ann Wall, uh, playing Karen Page here. Uh, prior to this, she'd been in the series True Blood. She's also in the film Catch 44. Uh, she's, been, she's been playing Karen since... Uh, 2015 in things like Daredevil, The Defenders, The Punisher, other Netflix kind of team-up shows. Uh, following this, she was in uh, a D&D actual play show uh, called Force Grey uh, with Nerdist, as well as, I believe, another one of her own. It was maybe Geek and Sundry? I don't remember. Uh, but she's a you know big D&D nerd as well. Uh, and as I have found myself getting into that recently with Dimension 20 and Critical Role, I'm going to give that a little shout out to uh, Eldon Henson playing Foggy Nelson, uh, going all the way back to the Mighty Ducks, where he played Fulton Reed, the iconic uh, Bash brother. He's also in the films Idle Hands, The Butterfly Effect, as well as the uh, Mockingjay Hunger Games duology, uh, Mockingjay, Mockingjay Part 1 and Part 2. Um Vincent Nofrio playing Wilson Fisk here. In this episode, we only get him a little bit of a voice cameo, but he, of course, would go on to be uh, uh, an iconic uh, element of the show. Uh, been in projects like Full Metal Jacket, Ed Wood, Men in Black, iconically, of course, as Edgar the Alien. Uh, he was in Law and Order Crimin Criminal Intent for a good long run. Uh, more recently, he's been in Jurassic World, Dishonored 2, and he has been playing Wilson Fisk slash Kingpin since 2015 here, uh, most recently reappearing in the Hawkeye series and slated for appearances in Echo, as well as that Daredevil Born Again series. Bob Gunton playing Leland Owlsley, uh, iconic as the, uh, the corrupt warden in Shawshank Redemption, uh, but he's also in the uh, series 24, and most recently... Uh, he was the the uh, Egon stand-in, effectively, in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, so, kind of in the shadows. Uh, Wai Ching Ho, playing Madame Gao, uh, having been in uh, projects like The Sorcerer's Apprentice prior to this. Uh, but she would go on to be Madame Gao in a number of the Netflix series, including Daredevil, Iron Fist, and The Defenders. Uh, more recently, she was in the uh, the Pixar film Turning Red earlier this year as the grandmother. Uh, Toby Leonard Moore playing James Wesley. Uh, just uh, wanted to give him a shout out because he like when he popped up in this, I was like, oh, this guy, he is like immediately memorable and like as the slimy uh, assistant to Wilson Fisk in here. Uh, prior to this, he'd been in the first John Wick film. Uh, after this, he would go on to be in the series Billions and the film Mank. Uh, and then lastly, just because like as soon as he came up, I was like, I know that voice. Gideon Emery is playing Anatoly, one of the Chechnyan goons. Um, uh, I think they're at least referred to as Chechnyan. I don't know if that was just like a Middle Eastern like generalism by uh Leland's character or something like that but he is the iconic voice actor behind characters like Balthier in Final Fantasy 12, Fenris in Dragon Age, uh recently Biggs in the Final Fantasy 7 remake and numerous other projects. Uh his voice came up I was like is that is that who I think it is and I, sure enough IMDb confirmed it. Gideon Emery so shout out to him uh playing Anatoly there. Uh, a little bit of the trivia on this um, Charlie Cox was honored at the American Foundation for the Blind's 19th Annual Helen Keller Achievement Awards on June 18th, 2015, for his performance as the blind superhero devil, Daredevil. Netflix made this show the first to have a descriptive video service. When fans demanded the descriptive video service be added, Netflix got it completely done in only four days. The black costume sh that is shown... Uh, takes great inspiration from Frank Miller's Daredevil comic book storyline, The Man Without Fear. Uh, this was an alternate retelling of Daredevil's origin in a limited run series. The Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, apparently owes its existence to Daredevil, the 2003 film, 
While playing Foggy Nelson in that film, Jon Favreau spoke to Marvel about directing what would eventually become Iron Man in 2008. Uh, the, of course, breakout entry and kickoff to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, lastly, from this episode in particular, when Murdoch and Foggy are renting the office space, the realtor talks about event, uh, the price going down since the incident uh, and these allusions to that. We also get um, some some imagery uh, on like the newspapers and stuff, of course, was referring to the Battle of New York from the uh, 2020 fil- 2012 film Avengers uh, as being a few years after the fact. Um, uh, and one of the like most overt confirmations that these Netflix shows do exist within the same universe as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even though they were never really playing nicely together um, until, you know, eventually we got by by popular demand, I think, uh, Charlie Cox appearing in Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, so diving in, does this hold up and what do I think about it? Uh, I remember watching this back when it came out um, as I, you know, uh, consume so much of uh, MCU stuff. Uh, and I really enjoyed this first season. Um, I probably did originally binge it you know in over the course of a weekend or something like that i don't i certainly don't remember like the 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 act the actual kind of timeline of things you know here we are seven years removed but i remember enjoying it um and i remember especially enjoying when jessica jones came along the idea that like these villains like wilson fisk and the purple man got so much more time to like be villains compared to the relatively short time span we had gotten of any of the villains in the MCU at this point. Like, you know, I remember, uh, especially with the purple man and Jessica Jones being like, I think I like him better than Loki as the like best MCU villain. Um, and I think that the, the time that we get these characters, especially now in the Disney plus era of things, we we've seen that like these longer series runs, means we get to you know spend more time with these characters even if it is you know a six episode run or something like that you know the time we spent with wanda in wandavision um was you know immensely more time than we gotten across multiple appearances in the mcu up to that point so like the the time we get the fact that we're getting you know half a movie here just in this first episode with matt gives a lot more breathing room to get a sense of these characters and i think um, that serves them very well. I think the fact that this, you know, this this was a Netflix show um, uh, gave it a, you know, more grit to it. And um, uh, and the, you know, obviously they're they're really leaning into the, you know, more adult content of it compared to, you know, maybe what they were doing on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at the time or something like that. The fact that, you know, you have Karen just kind of like getting changed right there in front of Matt is like a weird thing. Obviously you don't see anything, but it's a weird thing to see in a Disney plus show now. Um, but like it, it, you know, made sense in the more adult fair that Netflix was going for at the time. Uh, and what the, you know, all of that leading up to the defenders, uh, would kind of lean into. And I think I, I remember watching, this season and season two of Daredevil, I never went back to season three. It kind of been burnt out on the Netflix model and binging stuff by then. And also, you know, obviously with um, some of the lesser elements like Iron Fist and the Defenders not really performing and not really like being as compelling to continue the journey. Uh, yeah, like by by the time season three of Daredevil came around, I was like, eh, I'm over it. I'll get to it eventually, maybe. Uh, and then I just never really did. It's one of the, you know, it, theoretically it is still canonically MCU, but I it's one of the few MCU things I've not watched like that and Punisher um, uh, in particular, because Punisher, I think, does specifically lean, it, lean into a brutality that is not really my um, uh, aesthetic um, that doesn't jive with me. So, yeah, I I, I never went back to uh, to Daredevil th- season three. But it is something that, uh, especially with Daredevil Born Again, I will probably actually try and like revisit sometime down the line. Uh, so coming back to this particular episode, um, I think they did a lo- just a lot of really interesting and cool things. The the fact that they you know open with this 
the the quick little introduction to the Matt Murdock character as a child losing his vision, getting blinded by in this car accident with chemicals in his eyes, and then that before we even get the the opening credit sequence tying into Matt's confessional to really introduce us to like his his Catholicism is a key component to this character, and he's in there confessional like not as he says not um uh not seeking penance for what i've done but asking forgiveness for what i'm about to do his relationship with that the the priest uh, and the priest basically being like that's not how this works um is going to be such a a fun relationship throughout the the course of the series and the fact that we get it like introduced right there up at the top um you have this moment of like He's in there for confessional, but he's just telling the story about his father. But it all like ties into he like his father, you know, could always take a hit. And sometimes he would just kind of like go to a place where the devil was inside him and he would kind of get like dark and he would like unleash on people. And that segueing into Matt saying something to the effect of like, I didn't know what that was like then but i know like i the the illusion of course being i know now and then we you know um see him as daredevil uh kind of like with unleashing the devil within element um it's it's such a great like you know five minute introduction to the character and what this character is about in so many layers um that i really appreciate it and then we get this you know beautiful like waxy red uh, uh, opening sequence um, that, uh, you know, even though Netflix now is way more into the like skip intro stuff, like I remember just being like, why would I want to skip this intro? It looks so cool. And, and, you know, it's got like such a great soundtrack to it and all that stuff. Um, uh, we get into, uh, oh yeah, we like, even before that intro, we get also the Daredevil fighting at the docks and taking out the uh the human traffickers that are obviously going to play into the larger uh storyline throughout the episode um so we get to see just yeah all these all these elements of the daredevil character and then we come back and we get to see more matt and we get to see you know the introduction to um to foggy and to karen uh and the like the the real estate stuff uh where we see just you know charming matt murdoch um, uh, and then, uh, like the interrogation scene with Karen, we get to see kind of like the introduction to Matt's like human lie detector abilities and how they're going to kind of portray some of that stuff. Um, especially coming off of, you know, most people's exposure to this being the 2003 Daredevil film. Um, I think they just do such a, they, they do so much more with less, um, in terms of like, just kind of letting Matt's let letting um, Charlie Cox's performance really speak for what Matt Murdock Daredevil can can do as opposed to relying on like CG effects to explain away, you know, how he can see all these weird, you know, how he sees, you know, in, in sonar kind of vision or whatever like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, lots of just great character sequences and lots of great conversations um, to introduce uh, all these elements and the relationships that uh, get built up. And then on the flip side, we see kind of the, the introduction of a lot of the, the, you know, the, the, the United allied construction kind of like people like in the, you know, that I, um, uh, you know, a little bit tropey, but like they're all meeting up on a high rise, you know, Leland up there. Who's kind of calling it out. We got Nobu who's going to play a big role. Madam Gao is going to play a big role in the season. Like all of them are getting introduced. Uh, uh, Wesley, who we met earlier in the in the episode with that, like, you know, devastating um, just kind of catches a guy on his lunch break uh, and basically like leverages a debt that he is owed to uh, uh, like threatens his daughter. Uh, we get to see like the daughter on, you know, a tablet kind of thing. Um, uh, and then the real kind of like, like obviously that guy is being blackmailed to try and strangle Karen, uh, which is, you know, dark enough. Uh, but then really when everything has gone to plan and they're cleaning up loose ends and all that stuff, the montage we get at the end of the episode while 
uh, Matt is like boxing in the in in Fogwell's gym. Uh, we get you know this this dark almost the wire would always do these kinds of like like montage wrap ups at at the end of a season to kind of like let you know like where everybody's at but also usually do a little bit of like place setting for where characters you know are going moving into the next season uh and we almost get like that kind of montage at the end of this episode seeing how all of these like loose ends are tied up including the devastating the daughter walking in to do the laundry that she said she was going to come by and do uh and seeing like her dad's you know brains blown out um uh, from an apparent suicide, you know, in quotes, kind of. Uh, so yeah, just like such a a darker tone from what the Marvel had been doing on the big screen, of course. Um, that you know, ne- uh, Netflix and the you know the series was uh, was really leading into um, the you know the TVMA kind of vibe behind these shows. Um, really good stuff, uh, and and yeah, I. Uh, it's fun to revisit this. Obviously, other elements of Daredevil are going to be like the fights. The fight sequences are, are really, you know, really well choreographed. Um, uh, not, I mean, this episode has a few good sequences, but uh, uh, obviously I think the real claim to fame of season one was like the hallway fight. And then season two had the like stairwell fight that has, you know, gone on to inspire uh, things like... Um, uh, no time to die, uh, in, in bond and stuff like that. So, um, really like leaning into the less CG and more visceral fight stuff, uh, that these, you know, uh, uh, New York city heroes got to explore in, uh, in the, this version of the MCU, uh, really fascinating stuff. So, uh, I really enjoyed kind of getting to revisit it. Uh, and, um, I, I'm looking forward to, to see in Matt Murdock reappear and return to the MCU because he is definitely one of those standouts. Uh, and one of the things that, you know, it was always, there was always that hope of like, you know, him coming into Avengers Endgame and joining, you know, all the big, the, the big heroes, uh, in, in the Avengers. And, you know, we never got that, but, uh, but they're finally now that, you know, the Disney plus is making up half of the, the phase slate every time um, seeing that they, they're kind of like, Hey, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Like people really liked him. He was really great in the role. Let's go ahead and keep him as we're going to continue telling daredevil stories. Um, And we can, you know, either we can, we can play with the idea that everything he's done, he's already done, or we can, you know, explore new things and we'll see where we go with daredevil from there uh and so yeah i'm really looking forward to to seeing charlie cox and uh and wilson fisk continue to to return and all that stuff uh so overall i give this uh i give this an a um really like just a really good tight hour of uh of the show uh i know that the show as a whole has a lot as a lot of those Netflix shows had, you know, there were maybe one or two episodes longer than they needed to be. So there ends up feeling like there's a little bit of kind of like extra padding over the course of the, uh, the Netflix seasons. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, for, for this standalone episode, uh, really great, just kind of setting all the places, introducing a lot of these characters and just really good stuff. Uh, so yeah, a for me. Uh, extra credit, other suggestions. If you like this, you have She-Hulk Attorney at Law, which is out there now, of course. Uh, and then you have basically all the other TV stuff. Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders, The Punisher, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Agent Carter are the recommendations. Extracurriculars, what else are we watching on Disney Plus? Uh, of course, watched episode four of Andor. Really continuing to do- enjoy that. I know last week I mentioned that I was wary to see how now that they're not telling like, you know, the three episode arc um, all in one night, how was I going to enjoy kind of this like standalone episode? Um, and I think I, I think I'm still this this episode definitely felt like a part one of three kind of thing. So I imagine it's another three episode arc that we're getting. Um, but I I, you know, still enjoyed it. I like this new adventure that Andrew's going on. Or, uh, I like the. Um, the, the, what we see on Coruscant, I like 
the like the Imperial Bureau kind of coming in and like trying to clean up the mess of Cyril Karn from uh, from that first uh, run of episodes. And I like seeing him, you know, basically like go home with his his tail between his legs and uh, like get slapped in the face by his mom. So, yeah, I'm very curious to see and, and excited to see where that series continues to go. Uh, we had She-Hulk uh, episode seven came out. Uh, enjoyed that as well. Uh, the this episode uh, uh, at Abominations uh, Abomaste, uh, his uh, his um, kind of group therapy place uh, it was a fun little uh, another another episode for Jen away from kind of the the law life uh, like the wedding wedding episode was last week. Um, so yeah, uh, really enjoying that still. Um, I did also watch, and I, I think I'd actually watched this ahead of last week's episode, but I'd already covered enough of other things that I talked about. Um, but I did watch the live action Pinocchio and it's not good. Um, it seems to have completely like missed the point of the original Pinocchio. So, you know, we may be doing a D plus show on that sometime down the road. Who knows? Um, but, uh, I did watch that and that was a thing that happened. Uh, but yeah, that is going to do it for this episode of that D plus show. Thank you for joining me to, uh, listen to me talk about the, uh, the episode one of daredevil season one, uh, from Netflix that era. Uh, you can follow me at Trevor J Starkey on Twitter. Uh, you can follow all of us over at that nerdy site or go to that nerdy site.com for all the latest from us. Once again, if you liked what you heard, please rate, review, like, subscribe, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. Thank you for joining me. As always, stay nerdy, be good to each other, and class dismissed.